Yes, sir. Okay, we're gonna show hypothalamus and pituitary here. So what I'm going to do is to cut through the brain, cross cerebral hemisphere, and here our goal is to find the uh, optical nerve. Here is the menange membrane, we don't need it. If we go deep down, we will see an uh, optical nerve here attached to the bone. We're going to cut it. So, hypothalamus is located just behind that optical nerve or optical chiasma. And what I'm doing here, I'm just pulling out the whole brain and here we're good to cut the cerebellum because we don't need to take samples from the cerebellum. And here we have right and the left uh, cerebral hemisphere and uh, just between those cerebral hemisphere we have pineal gland which we are not interested in taking today and what I am doing I am cutting the uh, cerebral hemispheres and here we have optical uh, lobe, two optical lobes, one is here, or mesocephalum, and this one, we need to cut them out, and hypothalamus is just located inside the middle part, and we are going to take the sample. So here we are going to take the sample from the territory. What I'm doing is I'm just cleaning the bones area and then the territory is located just underneath this bone. What we should do is we need to up the bone. I'm just cleaning the blood over there. Here we can see the security, but what I'm going to do is just cut the foam or cross the foam around that. So by that, we can access the security easily. And here is the security gland. Thank you. All right. Have you ever wondered how chickens know when to lay their first egg? Or let's say determine their age at first egg? Because it's really important, right? In terms of production economy, specifically for laying hens and broiler breeders, it's really important to optimize that age at first egg. Not really too early or not really too late, they need to start laying at the right time with the, you know, optimum body composition and body confirmation. They are likely, you know, ready to start their uh, laying phase. So actually, this secret lies deep inside their brain in two tiny parts. 
hypothalamus and pituitary that we just saw, you know, in that dissection video. So that's why today I'm going to introduce you to um, the reproductive access in uh, hens. We call it HPG access or hypothalamus pituitary gonad access. For females, this gonad actually refers to the ovary. So here we can see this access, hypothalamus pituitary ovary. It starts with the hypothalamus. It's going to uh, produce and secrete GnRH or G uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone or we have GnIH which is gonadotropin inhibiting hormone. So just imagine driving a car. Whenever you push the gas pedal you're going to move the car, right? So here in terms of reproductive access, actually this GnRH hormone is the gas pedal to start the reproductive access or start laying, right? But GnIH or gonadotropin inhibiting hormone is like a brake pedal in the car. So whenever you need to stop the car, you are going to hit the uh, brake pedal. So if hypothalamus in hands produce, you know, GnIH, it's like the brake pedal for the reproductive access. It means that it's going to stop laying, stop the HPG access, which is not good, right? And today I'm going to emphasize on some factors like environmental factors or intrinsic factors that can affect the gas pedal or the brake pedal. And of course, we are looking for the gas pedal, which is the secretion of gonadotropin releasing hormone or GnRH. So before talking about these factors, let's complete the explanation about this HPG access. So we have secretion of GnRH or the gas pedal. It's going to trigger the pituitary to produce FSH and LH. FSH stands for follicle stimulating hormone and LH stands for luteinizing hormone. Then these hormones are going to affect the ovary to produce estradiol or progesterone. So for the FSH, it's going to, you know, affect these small white follicles on the ovary. We call them prehierarchical follicles. To produce estradiol. On the other hand, we have LH hormone, which is going to affect these large yellow follicles. We call them preovulatory follicles, and they are going to produce progesterone. Progesterone is involved in the process of ovulation. Ovulation, in a simple language, is the release of egg yolk from the ovary to the oviduct and in the oviduct we have the you know process of uh, egg formation so now let's talk about the environmental factors that can affect you know the activation of hpg access so we have factors like light nutrition temperature and stress. So if we have any kind of stress or let's say any kind of abnormal temperature or uh, malnutrition or, you know, any abnormal light intensity or lighting or let's say the duration of light, they are going to affect the hypothalamus negatively, which means that we will have GnIH, which is going to actually hit the brake pedal and uh, stop laying. That's why we need to optimize these environmental factors 
by optimizing the you know photo stimulation process a good nutrition you know a good temperature in the barn and avoiding any kind of stress for our birds then we will have the secretion of GnRH that will act like a gas pedal and we will see you know a good uh, laying phase on the other hand we have some intrinsic factors it means that they are related to the body so we call them metabolic status the metabolic status can affect the hypothalamus as well it can affect it in a positive way or in a negative way so it boils down to the body composition of the birds when we are talking about body composition really we are talking about the lean mass the amount of lean mass like breast muscle and also the amount of uh, fat and adipose tissue because adipose tissue you know can uh, produce adiponectin and other uh, adipo kinds in the body and they are involved in the reproductive access so if we have you know a good growth trajectory or growth curve target growth curve for our birds then we will have you know an optimum body composition and optimum metabolic status that would be in favor of this gas pedal activation of the hpg axis that's why i really want you to you know look at the reproduction and let's say uh, laying performance really from the physiology standpoint and see what's going on and how our management can affect the bird's physiology and the bird's performance and at the end of the day our profitability so let's move on to the next slide which is my uh, last slide for today i'm just going to briefly talk about some organs that associated with reproduction in hens it's not only hypothalamus pituitary ovary we have other tissues that are collaborating you know with the reproduction one of them is the liver which is producing uh, you know yolk components and you know liver is part of the digestive system part of the gut and that's why gut health is really important for a successful production and in my uh, future videos i'm going to talk about gut health more in depth we have oviduct again it's going to produce al albumin because as you know for the uh, for the ovary it's like producing the egg yolk and releasing the egg yolk but uh, after that you know oviduct is responsible to put you know albumin around the egg yolk and also uh, you know put the eggshell and you know finalize the egg formation and in terms of you know shell forming tissue of course we have oviduct which is the shell gland part of the oviduct that is responsible for this process and also the skeletal system in skeletal system we have um two types of bones i would say one is structural bones and the other type is medullary bones so these medullary bones are acting like bank account for the calcium deposition so during the pullet phase they are responsible to you know uh, deposit calcium and it's like saving account it's going to save that calcium for the future what is the future laying phase 
So in the laying phase, the medullary bones is going to release this calcium to, you know, um, uh, create the uh, eggshell. And without having a good uh, bank account for the calcium, we will end up with a compromised eggshell, which means that eggshell quality will be compromised. That's why it is important to really build a robust skeletal system in terms of, you know, improving the medullary bones. Otherwise, if, you know, the medullary bones are depleted from the calcium, what happens is the structural bones is going to release their calcium to form eggshell. And it's going to uh, create osteoporosis um, situation in, the, uh, in our hands, and they will end up with having, you know, weak bones. And it'll, it's going to really affect their performance. That's why when we are talking about um, having a robust egg production period, we need to understand environmental factors and also, you know, a good nutrition, good growth curve to have a, you know, a productive uh, egg production phase. So that's it for today. And in the next video, I'll be talking more about the ovulation physiology. I have a pre-recorded video that I'm going to release it. And if you have any questions, please let me know. And I will see you in the next episode.